Hey yo, what is up guys, Akash here back with another video and yes, we'll be today looking at different types of temperature sensors that you can use in your projects that you do with your Arduino Uno, your ESP32 or your ESP8266. We'll be looking at different temperature sensors, for example, the DHT11, the thermistor, classic thermistor, we all love that fella, the DS18B20 and the DS18B20, a different package. Uh, we'll be uh, interfacing the DS18B20 with the Arduino and the ESP module today. We'll be looking at the difference between these, the use case, the application, the advantages and the disadvantages of each particular sensor over the other. Towards the end of the video, we'll be using the DS18B20 with the ESP8266 and making a web-based server which shows the temperature as on the screen right now. If that seems interesting, stay tuned to the video because it's happening over here at CE Tech. I recently came across utsource.net. It is a one-stop site for all your electronic component requirements. They follow PDMO, where you can buy multiple parts, even those that are discontinued for good prices with fast shipping. They offer discount coupons on new orders. You can even find the parts that I am using in my video on utsource.net. All the links will be in the video description box below. Do check them out. If you're not interested in all the technical and theoretical stuff and just want to directly jump into the project part, uh, you can head over to this timestamp as on the screen right now to skip the theoretical part. But I'll suggest taking a look at it as it will have some advantages from application perspective. So as we have three different types of temperature sensors, we will need to understand what advantage one poses over the other. Where can a temperature sensor be used? Where can we find its particular application? Uh, before that, as we are pretty much familiar with the DHT11, I've done a couple of videos about the DHT11. I'll link them down below and you'll find them at the top right here as well. We are also pretty much familiar about the NTC thermistor about which I'll be doing a video very soon. But today we'll be focusing on the DS18V20. That is why we have two different types of package for that as well. But before going over there, let's look at the data sheet of the DS18V20. So the DS18V20 is a programmable resolution one wire digital thermometer. So it's a digital thingy. And uh, let's look at the types of packages. We will be looking at the features uh, and the benefits and the features uh, while we'll be comparing them side by side. But we can uh, start with looking at the pin configuration and the type of packages that the data sheet lists down. So the data sheet lists down uh, three types of packages. This one is the TO92, which we have right over here, which is often used for small transistors. Uh, we have this one micro SOP and SO package as well. These are basically surface mount uh, IC forms where as you see so uh, by surface mount I mean these small ICs that are here. So the, like this IC we have the DS18B20 package available as well. Uh, so this particular is a aftermarket type of device which is fabricated not by the manufacturer. This basically uh, consists of a transistor like this only inside the metal shielding but this has its own application as, as it's more robust and it's waterproof so this is uh, mostly used in real life scenarios wherein we need to take temperature out of some places so uh, that's about the data sheet we can keep the tablet on the side and now we can look at these uh, side by side so first things first, the DS18B20 and the DHT11, these two sensors are digital sensors, while the NTC thermistor that we have is an analog sensor. So now we have a more stricter criteria wherein we will be focusing more on comparing these two as this is a type of a different uh, sensor. Essentially, uh, there is a thermistor present inside the DHT11 and inside the DHT11. DS18B20 as well, but we also have a kind of a microcontroller or a smart IC that processes that analog data into digital data so that we are able to use that easily. Also, the uh, DHT11 and the DS18B20, you can directly use them out of the box. It kind of needs no calibration as such and no mathematical formulas at it directly as it 
directly spits out digital values with the temperature while in the NTC thermistor if we use this we might have to uh, apply some math formulas to exactly calculate the value of the temperature that it's spitting out depending on its change of resistance so basically in an NTC thermistor the resistance between these two terminals change on the basis of the temperature so we need to understand that change in resistance by applying a voltage and then calculating the current it's a long and tedious process which is not easy but yes this is the basic bare thing which is present inside the dht11 and the ds18b20 so without an ntc thermistor nothing would have been possible over here moving on as we said that these two are digital the ds18b20 spits out around 9 to 12 bit of digital data which contains the temperature while the dht11 spits out an 8 bit data which consists of the temperature and the humidity so yes there's a difference over there that the ds18b20 only calculates the temperature while the DHT11 does temperature and humidity both so there the DHT11 gets one point to itself and the NTC thermistor being analog we can say that it does uh, output analog data and no data in bits moving on to the technical specification the DS18B20 uh, operates on a voltage range of around 3 to 5.5 volts while the DHT11 operates on 3.3 volts to 5 volts and the NTC thermistor operates from 0 to 5 volts. Talking about the technical specifications, the temperature range which the DS18B20 can uh, measure is from minus 55 degree centigrade to 125 degree centigrade. While the DHT11 can only do from 0 to 50 degree centigrade so that's a lot of temperature bandwidth difference the ds18b20 is able to cover a more larger band in terms of measurement where the dht11 is only able to cover a short part of it the thermistor on the other hand is also able to do around minus 55 degree centigrade to around 150 degree centigrade so the ntc thermistor gets an upper edge over here moving on while we are talking about the temperature calculations let's see what the accuracy of this is so for the ds18b20 it's around 0 0.5 plus minus 0 0.5 degree centigrade for the dht11 it's plus minus 2 degree centigrade and for the ntc thermistor which is our champion gets from around my plus minus 0.2 degree centigrade so again we see that the thermistor is good here but uh, because we are looking at the digital sensors over here here the DS18B20 has a large difference in accuracy and is more accurate than the DHT11. All these sensors come at a cost for the cost of DS18B20 for the TO92 package is around 40 cents while you can find this proper packaged DS18B20 for around a dollar. The DHT11 on the other hand is somewhere in middle of this price range for around 0.6 dollars 60 cents you may say while the NTC thermistor is pretty cheap ass and comes for around only 5 cents each so now we have taken a look at the basic differences that we have each of these have an edge over the other uh, where let's talk about the application of these sensors the ntc thermistor is obviously widely used and is used inside the dst11 and pretty much inside the ds18v20 as well so we look at the ntc thermistor more at a commercial device and internal temperature check point of view wherein you need to see the temperature of ic's of devices their performance using their temperature so that is where the NTC thermistor is used in building other devices so now let's narrow our funnel down to DHT11 and DS18B20 the DS18B20 is found in many places from your air conditioners to your electric thermostats they are also used as thermometers electric thermometers use the DS18B20 to check the temperature while the DHT11 is more of an open air device wherein it does not require contacts so in applications where room temperature needs to be calculated or measured the DHT11 grabs a big chunk over there so the dht11 and ds18b20 do not compete from application point of view this finds a niche application of itself and the dht11 also does that for example if you need to find the temperature of a hot beverage or a cold beverage or anything liquid you won't use the 
DHT11 as it is not waterproof while the DS18V20 the package that we just saw is a waterproof thing the NTC thermistor is also waterproof this is not something that you will use outdoors probably and where there's a lot of liquid involved there you will use the D DS18V20 or some or in places where you need to check the contact temperature so for example you need to see the body temperature all while cooking you need to see temperature of your food there we will be using the DS18V20 in places where no contact temperature is needed the temperature of the air is required the DHT11 is the perfect partner in that situation. So now that we are done with the technical aspects of these temperature sensors we can get rid of the DHT11 and the NTC thermistor and we can focus on the DS18V20. We look at interfacing this sensor not this one with the Arduino and with the ESP8266. You can also use this in interfacing it with your ESP32 module. So let's get started with that. So for the first part of the project what we'll be doing is interfacing the DS18B20 with an Arduino and showing the recorded temperature on the Arduino serial monitor. For that firstly we'll see the terminals of the DS18B20 and it has three terminals the black wire, the yellow wire and the red wire. The red wire is for voltage, the black one is for ground and the yellow one is for the signal. We'll be using an Arduino. In addition we'll need a 4.7k ohm resistor uh, in the circuit, looking at the circuit diagram, I'll bring in my tablet for that. If we see that the voltage rail goes to the ground and the VCC pin over here like that and like that. Uh, while the middle pin for the TO92 package goes to digital pin 12 on our Arduino using this green wire to the middle pin and that is uh, connected using a 4.7k resistor to the power line so this is a pull up resistor for the signal line which is required in this case another interesting fact about the DS18B20 is that you can interface multiple DS18B20 to a single uh, microcontroller because because it is a single wire thing you can uh, look at the address of the particular DS18B20 and be at, and check the temperature at that address and so you can use multiple DS18B20s with your Arduino or your ESP. I'll put relevant links for that in the description below and not talk about it today in this video. So I've connected the Arduino to the DS18B20 according to the circuit diagram. It's pretty much, it's pretty simple and uh, now we can go ahead and connect the Arduino to your laptop and start the coding part. So let's move on to the laptop. So the codes that I'll be using and the libraries required for the codes will be in a github repository which you can find in the description box below. Head over to the github page, open the basic code and copy it on your uh, Arduino IDE. So once you've copied the code on the Arduino IDE, head over to tools uh, select the correct board and select the correct COM port and just hit the upload button. Once the code gets uploaded head over to the serial monitor and select the correct board rate which is 9600 for our case and you will see that the temperature reading is shown over here. What I'll quickly do is just to test that the temperature is taken correctly or not I'll use a lighter to heat up the temperature probe and we should see the temperature rise up. So currently the temperature was 27 and you see it's it started to rise to 33, 32, uh, it's 35 and above. So yeah that works pretty fine. Now we let it cool down and once it cools down it will come back to the temperature. So that was the basic circuit with the Arduino that we saw. Uh, we can modify the Arduino code to do other things but yes we will not stop here today. We will be disconnecting the Arduino from the circuit and now we will be connecting our ESP8266 into the circuit. For the ESP8266 the circuit is similar. The power lines go to the ground and VCC of the DS18B20. The signal line will go to GPIO12 which is uh, D5 in our case for the node MCU. We will need a voltage drop resistor over here as well. So I've connected the ESP8266 to the DS18B20 now. Uh, what we can do is after connecting to the computer you can use the same code that we did for the Arduino as well and we'll see similar results wherein we'll see the temperature of the 18B20 probe on the serial monitor but this time we need to look at creating a beautiful web server which shows the value on the internet. So for that let's once again head over to our laptop. 
firstly uh, you will need to head over to the github repository that i had mentioned earlier you need to copy the code present in the esp8266 temperature web server once you copy and paste that to your arduino ide over here and over here you need to change your ssid and the password and pretty much there is no change required elsewhere once you're done with that just upload the code and open the serial monitor just hit the reset button on the sp8266 and you will see some uh, language written on the serial monitor it's just mentioning the ip address that we need to head over where our web page is present so i'll open this uh, so I'll copy this IP address and open it on my web page. As soon as I head over to the web page, I see that the uh, server shows the temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit and the serial monitor starts reading the temperature. We'll do something similar what we did in the previous uh, demo. I'll heat up the probe quickly so that we see that the web server is working in a fine condition and there we see that the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit both has risen. We'll heat up the probe more so that we can rise the temperature more and we'll see in a second that yes the temperature reaches 38 degree centigrade and 100 degree fahrenheit the probe is a bit hot as well so here we use the wi-fi capability of the esp8266 if you plan to use the esp32 you can use the bluetooth functionality of the esp32 to transfer this temperature as well the applications of this are endless so I hope the tutorial and the demonstrations with the theoretical part was helpful for you and you will be comfortable with using the DS18B20 in the future. You will find a perfectly good use case for that. As I mentioned that I have done a couple of videos on the DHT11 as well. Do check them out. All the relevant links will be in the description below. That was it from my side for today's video guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now. Also hit the bell icon to stay notified. This is our first signing off.